There is a town with the name of a nonsense word. It is a word which is mumbled with disregard. A word employed by tepid tongues whilst contemplating other things. There are faces carved into the collective memory of this trite place. These stubbled skins scatter and assemble, scatter and assemble, fragmenting themselves, then sliding along the tiled fluorescence of the halls. Their hunchback skeletons scuttle unceasingly. Their memorized paths remain clumsy meanderings, unconsciously tugged along by the thick strings of perpetuated system. They are tunnel-visioned daydreamers, with their eyes shut and their ears plugged. They're troubled by their own inherent vapidness. They're angry at what the world hasn't given them, but they can't name what they don't have. They pile on affectations and falsehoods with every breath. But do they know any better? These enraged, misguided souls are always trying. They're involved. They're surrounded by warm bodies faking liveliness. They're adorned by coordinated clothing and matching mentalities. Were they taught, or did they simply observe, after countless errors hidden behind closed mouths? Did they learn that being the same was the only way that they could manage? Their once wide-eyed ignorance had been extinguished by chap-lipped rejection, rejections that have filled their keyboards and their backlit screens. The constant stimulation has left them unsatisfied and sedentary. Their empty eyes stare into these electronic voids, enticing them to remain, whitewashing their minds in candy-coated toxicity, keeping them prisoners from a true existence. They live in an in-between, a world populated by pixelated versions of themselves and people they wish they were. They guide they gild their mundane flesh inside and out with pestilence. These blank, impressionable souls are my painted brethren. They strut beside me with their cackling mouths and their suffocating warmth. They call to one another in deep, hoarse groans, reverting to a race of prehistoric beings they deliberately refuse to articulate with delicacy or finesse. They've allowed their minds to be caged, and their supposed feats of rebellion are pathetic and as impermanent as whispers. They are Pavlov's dogs. They are half-hearted protests against busy work disguised as tools for intellectual growth. I am repulsed by them all, yet I was one of them. No matter how hard I refused to accept my heritage of sorts, I walked that treadmill existence. I drooled when commanded. I felt like the only sane person amongst insanity. But divergence is insanity, and vice versa, isn't it? I also rebelled in the smallest ways, keeping my energy pent up until it no longer belonged to me, until I was as bleary-eyed and beaten down as the rest of them. Maybe my mind will never truly recover from the indignity of a creative suppression in the name of community. Maybe I will never regain the airlight psyche and endlessly creative spirit I possessed as a child. But, for the most part, I did not embrace my community. But in an odd way, they have shaped me, and maybe the parts of myself that I love best are a direct result of them.